Okay, afternoon everyone. It's it's now a few minutes after one o'clock by my reckoning, and we look to have uh, a fair few people joining. Hopefully, those that we're expecting. Uh, obviously, any stragglers will be able to uh, pick up as they join. Um, just to introduce myself quickly, my name is Lee Gibson, and I work on communications for the Turing scheme at Capita. I think the first thing for me to do this afternoon is to thank you all for your interest in uh, the Turing scheme and for taking time out of your busy days uh, to join us now and learn a little bit more about it. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping to start off with, as you can see on screen there. Um, please, uh, if everyone could remain on mute for the duration and keep their cameras off, that would allow everyone to uh, concentrate on the presenters and the slides that we'll be sharing. And as you can see there, the webinar is also being recorded. Uh, so unless you're really desperate to, there's no need to take copious amounts of notes. You will be able to refer back to the recording afterwards, which we will share on our YouTube channel. And I believe we'll also share the slides at some stage too. OK, then um, I'm sure some of you uh, already have some knowledge and awareness of the Turing scheme, perhaps even applied last year and maybe even were funded last year. Um, but equally, I'm fairly certain that there'll be those among you for whom the Turing scheme is something new and, and you know very little about it. Hopefully in uh, in this session today, we'll have managed to try the right balance for you all, um, regardless of what, where, what your knowledge is in the information that we'll be sharing. This is actually one of three webinars that we've delivered this week. We've already spoken to the schools and the higher education sectors, and obviously now it's the turn of you guys working in the, the FE and VET sector. Um, during the webinar, you will be hearing from, um, if we can have the speaker's slide, Rich. Yeah, I'll introduce all these people individually. I'm sure they can do it themselves when when they're up to speak, but you will be hearing from the Department for Education, us here at Capita, and as you can now see there, also our colleagues at the Association of Commonwealth Universities who are collaborating with Capita on uh, the programme, in particular around the assessment of applications. Um, the aim this afternoon is to offer a brief overview of the Turing Scheme and its potential benefits for your learners and your colleges or organisations. Um, to take a look at how applications will be assessed and hopefully offer a few useful tips on creating a good application, as well as flagging some of the support and resources that uh, that we have available to help you navigate the application process. I should also point out that, that we won't be taking uh, live questions during the webinar, mainly for reasons of time and practicality. Um, but we are obviously very interested in, in receiving your questions and, and answering them to the best of our ability. Uh, so to that end, if you uh, if you want to, you can by all means, and we would certainly encourage you to use the chat function uh, while the webinar is in progress to post questions. And um, if questions, if you were to occur to you when we finished, or if you prefer not to use the chat function, you can so email us questions afterwards. Uh, to that very email that you can see on screen now, turing schema capitacom uh, the intention then is that we will collate uh, all of the questions we receive and use those to create um, FAQs, which we will share in due course via the website and our other channels. And I'm sure that uh, that they will also inform other support materials that we will be developing as we go along too. Um, I think that's pretty much all I need to say to you at this stage. So um, I will uh, not hold you up any longer and get started on the, the real meat of the session this afternoon and pass you on to the people that you've really come along to listen to and the first of those is martin cunliffe from the department of education martin thank you lee hello everyone so my name's martin and i work for the department for education where i am the communications and stakeholder engagement lead for the Turing scheme I'll start by echoing Lee and thanking you all for attending today's webinar. And what I'll do is I'll speak just briefly now to provide a bit of the policy context for you as we start on the second year of the Turing scheme, which will be supporting placements that take place in the 22 to 23 academic year.
Some of you will already have experience of the scheme from the first year, but for others, this may well be your first time planning an application in either case. Today's webinar will help you to better understand how the scheme operates, how you develop the best possible application so that your learners can take advantage of the life changing opportunities that the scheme offers. Our core objectives remain the same this year as last, which is to provide the opportunity for students, learners and pupils from all backgrounds to study and work abroad, supporting people from across the UK to become more globally mobile and culturally agile. Funding for the continuation of the Turing scheme has now been confirmed for the next three years, including £110 million for the 22-23 academic year. Now to meet our aims as a global education and training pro programme, Turing scheme projects must focus on four main objectives and you'll keep hearing these as you kind of go through today, but I'll run through them now from our kind of perspective. So the first of those is Global Britain and we do this by supporting high quality placements, enhancing existing partnerships and forging new relationships across the world. Secondly, levelling up by widening participation and supporting social mobility across the UK, regardless of background. Thirdly, developing key skills by offering unique career building opportunities that give participants the hard and soft skills sought by employers and bridge the gap between education and work. And fourthly, value for UK taxpayers by optimising the social value in terms of potential cost, benefits and risks. Now the Turing scheme is open to organisations from across the UK and the British Overseas Territories and is a truly global programme. We want to enable you to develop and sustain partnerships across the world, which can provide the best opportunities for your students. When considering destinations across the globe, our only proviso is that all education providers managing mobilities should follow the relevant Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office travel advice, being aware that the situation can change rapidly. The past year has seen COVID-19 causing a great deal of uncertainty, especially around international travel. I hope that those who have been involved in projects this year have already seen firsthand how we've provided flexibility and additional options wherever possible to help projects deal with these pressures. Participants this year have nonetheless been able to undertake a huge range of interesting and engaging mobilities, and we really look forward to seeing what your plans are for the year ahead. For this year of the scheme, we will be working with Capita, who have been awarded the contract to deliver the scheme following a competitive recruitment process. We are confident that Capita have the capacity and skills to deliver the scheme. They have more than 35 years of experience supporting more than 180 local authorities and 21,000 schools, as well as being one of the largest IT providers to the UK education system. They will combine their capabilities in digital grants management, education and complex program management to support you in delivering life-changing educational opportunities for participants in the Turing Scheme. Our key call to you is to ask that you take advantage of the opportunities offered by the scheme and the support offered by Capita as you prepare your applications and define your projects. You have everything you need to prepare your applications available to you now through the website which has the program guide and the application guide. And to, to end my section, I really look forward to seeing your projects develop and get delivered. OK, thanks. So I'll hand you on now to the next speaker who's going to be looking at the pros and cons and the benefits that you can get through the Turing scheme. Thanks. Thank you very much, Martin. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrea Smith. I'm a programme manager at Capita, and it's a real pleasure to join you for this next um, few minutes to talk to you about the benefits of the Turing Scheme for your learners in the uh, further education, vocational education and training uh, sector. So we really wanted to make sure when we uh, provided these webinars that we really thought about the audiences and the things that they might need to know and learn about, particularly those that may have been underrepresented in applications in the first year. Um, so really, this is a real call to action for, for you and uh, your colleagues in terms of applying for the funding that has been made available to you. The Turing Scheme is open to any of your learners that are enrolled in um, an eligible institution across the UK, including all four nations and British overseas territories. And there's five sort of real pieces of information that we feel 
are really beneficial to you in terms of understanding how that might benefit your organisation and your learners and outcomes for learners. I think the first thing is, and, and I'm, I'm not intending to read this verbatim, but it is about you know opening the world to those learners and offering what are seminal and life changing experiences to ex increase their exposure across the world, um, especially those who would otherwise be unable to explore beyond their own boundaries. We know that through uh, experiences, those types of um, of experiences abroad really do improve their uh, view of the world um, and they learn so much more uh, through the richness of, of those travels. We want to make sure that you also understand that you can fund even existing trips or devise new trips, utilising a really wide range of supported costs for your learners, including linguistic and accompanying persons, so that then that removes the bur bur burden of budget from yourselves and also from the parents that often are, are looked to to help fund those experiences. We know that uh, international travel, you know, provides learners with that real focused and targeted time to understand the topics and the uh, professional development that they are w wishing to pursue um, and that that uh, experiential learning is delivered at its best through that international travel. We recognise and we hope you do also that during that, particularly with a company in person, it gives a real opportunity to strengthen and enhance your relationships with your learners um, so that you can support them during and after um, their experience in a real more meaningful way. And, and thirdly, from, from your perspective, those accompanying uh, uh, adults and lecturers, you know, really get a, a good opportunity to learn new practices um, um, and enhance their own uh, continued professional development by um, accompanying those on these international travels, understanding different ways of working and practice educational practices across the globe. Thank you. We're going to talk a little bit about finding an international partner here. So um, it's really important when you are applying that you have identified an international partner to receive your learners um, at an organisational level. What's great about the Turing scheme is there's a huge amount of flexibility there for you in order to identify. And we're just going to spend a couple of moments just talking about those eligible receiving organisations for this sector. Now, I must stress all of this information and anything we've talked about now is co completely available on the existing programme guide, which can be found on our website. So we haven't sought to uh, paraphrase here. This information is lifted directly from the, the programme guide in a section that is dedicated to uh, further education and vocational education and training um, applicants. But in simple terms, um, FE and VET providers can send their participants and learners to the following organisations. Um, first point is any public or private organisation that is active in the field of further education or voc vocational education and training. Next slide. Any public or private organisation active in the labour market, and there's some examples here for you, including SME enterprises, public bodies, social partners or, or foundations. And also schools and institutes from any level, primary school to upper secondary, including vocational and adult education, and non-profit organisations, and also organisations that do provide career gu guidance, professional counselling and information services. So what I hope you can see from that is there's a wide range of options open to you in terms of the types of organisations that can receive your learners during their mobility uh, opportunity. We also wanted to give you some tips about how to find an international partner for those that might be uh, new to this experience. And, and you know, we must stress this is something that you need to have identified um, to start or, or to complete, I should say, your application process. 
So the first thing is just to use your existing relationships and links to those types of institutions that we've talked about abroad. They, they may be uh, organisations that you've um, worked with previously and sent your learners to on a previous occasion or relative to related to that uh, trip. Um, they also might be other relationships you've got with higher education organisations or other alliances at a local authority level um, and beyond, of course. We'd also en uh, encourage you to engage with your local council regarding the town twinning scheme that does uh, exist already uh, and, and give them an understanding of what you're seeking to achieve and those objectives you're looking to deliver as part of that project and how they may support you facilitating introductions to organisation within those towns. We know that universities have a wealth of experience in identifying and forging meaningful relationships with uh, international partners and we'd really encourage you to use your existing relationships with those organisations, um, those that may for example underwrite any um, graduate uh, diplomas or uh, qualifications to help put you in touch with those outward mobility organisations that can support your learners. There are also a range of cultural organisations and embassies who can facilitate those introductions um, and help smooth your process in terms of finding a meaningful partner that will deliver those experiences that you're looking to achieve. And we also have a number of case studies both within our um, own website and across social media that talk about Turing Scheme and outward mobilities that you can utilise to your advantage uh, in, in order to identify organisations that have already hosted uh, learners across the UK. Thank you. I hope that's been useful information for you and again we will pick up questions and reply to them after this event. I'm going to hand you over now to our, our partners, the Association of Commonwealth Universities, who will talk to you about how you can best prepare for your application. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so uh, my name is Damien Gilchrist. I'm the project lead for Turing at the Association of Commonwealth Universities. Just a, um, a couple of words on, on that. Uh, I'm aware uh, that participants on this call may not um, have heard of the ACU. Uh, we're a 110 year old organisation. Um, we have 500 plus members in more than 50 countries internationally uh, and a global reach as well as extensive expertise and knowledge in delivering renowned international mobility and scholarship schemes uh, such as the UK government's Chevening uh, Commonwealth and Marshall Scholarship Schemes uh, and the multilateral Queen Elizabeth Commonwealth Scholarships. Um, so it's really that uh, backdrop that uh, brings us to, um, to Turing uh, to, to work with Capita, uh, where we will be running the assessment hub uh, and the application assessment process. So, um, just a note on uh, preparing for your application. Martin very helpfully uh, made the point earlier that everything that you need in order to apply um, is already online, um, other than perhaps the uh, partnerships that um, Andrea was speaking to earlier. So you do have the tools available to you now to start preparing your applications and uh, we would all urge you to uh, to start doing that now so that the application window when it comes along um, is um, not going to be limiting for you. Um, when you come to completing applications online, uh, you'll find the qualitative section split into, into four. And these broadly speak to the policy objectives that Martin introduced at the beginning of this webinar. So international engagement, levelling up, positive impact and value for money, and then a couple of questions on design and implementation. Uh, and these will look at how we're managing, how the mobilities are to be managed and how they're to be monitored. Uh, further information on these questions is contained in the application guide, including the uh, specific questions themselves and further guidance is to be found in the um, programme guide. So 
next next slide, please, please Richard. Thank you. Um, so this is just to say um, the weighting. Uh, so for international engagement, we have uh, one fifth of the marks leveling up 30% of the marks, positive impact and value for money, 30% of the marks and design and implementation one fifth. And uh, at this point, I'll hand over to my colleague, Dirtes Stevenson. Hello, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Damien. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Dirtes Stevenson. I'm advisor to the assessment hub here at the Association of Commonwealth Universities, U. And so you've heard um, from the previous speakers about the principles, benefits of um, how to prepare and um, I'll just go into two sort of bullet points about top tips for successful application. Um, apologies, you will have heard this before, but you will clearly uh, get the message now that the programme guide is really the thing to, to consult. And I'm sure for those of you who've already participated last year, um, applied and did success last year, you'll be very, very familiar with that, but I think it's really um, emphasize that that yeah all the salient pieces are outlined in there so um, in terms of sort of what makes a really successful application um, apart from the pro side um, it's it's knowing about your priorities so bear in mind the the quality criteria um, and ensure that your application aligns to those um, also try and plan ahead, and I know that's busy when everybody has got incredibly busy, um, uh, you know, lots of demands on their, on their everyday work already, but try and talk to your colleagues. Um, we found that it's, it's really, really helpful to, to generate ideas for your application. Um, Andrea mentioned earlier about the wide range of opportunities and options open in terms of partners for your learners. And so often through conversations with colleagues, possibly in other departments of um, your, your setup, you know, you might come up with, with further ideas, um, you know, for, for your applications and opportunities for your learners. In terms of the structure, again, apologies, some of this sounds very, very basic. Um, but it, it's really, really important to stress that it helps the assessors um, if your application is, is structured quite clearly and perhaps you use subheaders. Um, so it's a lot easier um, visually, structurally for the assessor to, to, to read this. You know your institution very, very well and might take things for granted. But as I said, if you structure it in, a, um, in, a, in an easier way with subheadings, that that is very helpful to the to the assessors um, when that time comes. Um, in terms of working smartly, um, refer back please to um, something that you've mentioned previously. Much much better to cross reference it rather than just um, simply copying and pasting. Um, again, you know, makes makes it a lot easier and will make your application a more succinct one. Um, and then final point is before you submit, um, yeah, do take a note of your unique application ID and make sure that you're totally happy and satisfied with your application. If you've got the uh, luxury, if you've got the time, perhaps get a colleague to, to, to read through it. Um, and then, yeah, before submit it, as I said, make sure you're entirely happy with it because um, there is only one chance to to submit it so that's a really important point to make hope that's um provided a little bit of of um advice um as previously said there is a support function um and um you can always email people for um help and assistance at a later stage um i'll hand you back to damien now thank you thank you I think that's um, that's a really helpful um, few tips there. Um, uh, and as you say, um, it might be something that people are already aware of, but um, hopefully helpful just to um, to hear that reconfirmed. Um, 
it will there will be a, a large number of applications for our assessors to um, to work through. So making those applications stand out, making them clear will be um, to applicants benefit. Um, so when we do receive those applications, um, uh, just a few words on 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 how they'll be um, assessed in the assessment process. So uh, applications will come into uh, to, to Capita uh, where they will be checked for eligibility before being passed to the assessment hub. Um, at the assessment hub, they will be uh, assessed for quality at the same time as a financial capacity check will be undertaken by Capita. Um, the assessment hub um, will have 28, it says 29 there, but it's 28 um, independent assessors who um, the ACU has contracted with uh, for the period of the um, uh, assessment window. Uh, and uh, of those 28, four will be senior assessors, one for each of the sectors and one uh, special advisor on widening participation and levelling up. Um, all of our assessors will receive training for standardisation and all applications are double marked with a proportion uh, of applications also uh, quality checked by the senior assessors. Um, so all discrepancies will be flagged in the scoring and then uh, addressed by senior assessors uh, with any interventions uh, being planned and discussed uh, on a weekly cycle. So uh, as I said, the eligibility check will verify the application is compliant with uh, the eligibility criteria. Uh, we'll have the financial capacity check, a little bit of repetition here, apologies. Um, and uh, we'll then uh, complete the qualitative assessment. Um, once we, we've done all of that, we create a ranked list and provide that to uh, what we call the project assessment board, which is a board hosted by the DFE uh, and including representation from across the devolved or, or sorry, from across the devolved administrations of the four nations of the UK uh, and across the sectors. And there the final decision will be made um, as ratifying that uh, that ranked list uh, as to um, who has been successful. And at that, at that point, I'll hand back to Capita. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Um, so the next couple of slides is just to talk about what we would really like you to do next, and also to share the key timings about how the application windows are going to progress. So the first thing we would really like you to do um, following this webinar and the information that we've shared is to actually register for the Turing scheme um, and to start that process. Uh, the registration process and the window of that is available now. Um, you can access the registration portal through our website, uh, turing-scheme.org.uk, um, and that's on the home page. It's the first uh, window you'll see. We've sought to make that registration process really quick and easy, um, taking feedback from the experiences of the systems that were used in the first year of the Turing scheme. Um, you will also, by virtue of registering, have created your account in the portal, which will then enable you to then apply when the window for applications and completing that work online uh, starts. Everybody who needs to apply does need to register and so doing that step now will just uh, expedite the application process because it is a, a mandatory step in that process. While you're on our website as well as uh, gathering and, and informing providing yourself with information on on all of the support materials that is available we'd really like you to sign up to our newsletter uh, they are tailored to each um, sector within the, the Turing scheme and there is a newsletter available in Welsh should anybody need it. 
The next thing we'd like you to do after you register is then to start to prepare your application <clears throat> offline, you know, working with your colleagues, thinking about those questions and using the programme guide and the application guide to gather the information that you'll need to input into the application online itself. We know from experience that having that planning done ahead makes the actual application process much smoother um, and um, having that information available will just facilitate that that for you. So but if you do need any support, not only can you download those materials, the frequently asked questions that are available to you, but you can also contact us uh, through our service centre on our email address. We've sought to make that email address for Capita to be really straightforward. There's a single email address. You don't need to think about who you're emailing. It is just Turing dash scheme at capita.com. And then, you know, go ahead and plan your applications and identify those groups of, of mobilities and trips that you would like to send your learners on with your partnering organisations. And then on the 31st of March, we will be opening that window for you to transpose all of that offline information that you've gathered into the applica online application itself. Again, we've designed a new system for this year, taking lots of information from those that experience the application process first time round. And we've sought to ensure that you, the application is a much is a guided process specific to your sector, offering you the questions that are only applicable to you and also making sure that the rates and the grant rates are again tailored to those rates that apply as they are described in the programme guide. We've also made sure that you can uh, come back to your application, save it and co continue your work at any point and that the progress of your application and anything that's left to do is really clear to you at any moment in time. You can access your application through the portal login that you will identify at registration point. And again, any questions around that, our support centre is there to help you and guide you through should you have any uh, concerns or any technical uh, assistance is needed. So these are the key dates that we're currently working to. There's a bit of iteration here, but better to tell you a number of times and not at all, I think. So the registration uh, uh, portal is now live and it's available to you. Application forms go live on the 31st of March and the window of those applications does close on the 29th of April and it closes at the same point for every sector this year, um, which is a slightly different, I understand, to last year, but they, everybody closes at the same point. And at that point, we will be handing over all of those completed applications for the assessment as per that process that Damien so ably described. And then we will seek to inform you of your application's outcomes by the end of June in order for you to be aware of which mobilities that will commence in September have been approved for funding. And I'm sure the message has come across loud and clear here that we have really thought about you as applicants um, in terms of the support and guidance that we've made available. And that will continue to build, notwithstanding the questions that we've received today and in our previous webinars, and also the questions that come to us in our service desk. So please do use that um, opportunity to ask your questions because they not only help you, but they will help lots of people who want to participate in the Turing scheme for this year. That service centre again has a single email address that will answer those inquiries and that material is available on the website. In addition, if you do go ahead and we hope that you do and register for this year, you'll also find within your portal account a direct contact form. So if you're in the registration after the registration process or even during your application process or for any other reason you'd like to contact us, you can also do that in a dedicated contact form uh, that will also append to your account so you can see how that uh, how those messages were responded to uh, whilst you're in the portal itself. I think that's everything that I can share with you today. Um, I'm going to hand you back over to Lee, uh, who opened this to, to, to close off. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, 
I'll just quickly say thank you very much to all of our other speakers this afternoon as well for uh, contributing their valuable time. Also quickly just to thank my colleague in the comms team, Rich Jarrett, who's been driving the slides for us. Uh, just a quick reminder before we, we close things up yet again that um, as you can see on screen there, if you haven't chosen to um, post any questions for us in via the chat function, you are more than welcome and again encouraged to do so via email on an email address which you've now heard several times, touring schema capita.com and we will collate those and use them to compile some FAQs which we'll share in due course and, and again inform our other materials. Um, I think next slide Rich again to remind, sorry permission, but to remind you if to to keep up to date with the latest news on the scheme for the 2022-23 academic year, we would very much advise you to register for um, our newsletters which as Andrea said are sector tailored and also a quick reminder that uh, another way of keeping up with the latest news and developments would be to follow us on all of the usual social media channels as well. I think we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and then the YouTube channel also. Um, but that said, uh, I think the only thing left to do is to thank you once again for your time this afternoon. I hope that you have found uh, what we've had to say of some value. Um, and again, as has been said, we'll urge you to to go away and hope and consider your options and hope very much to to be receiving applications from you in due course and to support you uh, through that process. So thank you very much.